Hello everyone. Today, uh, as you can see, we are filming this video in a different location. So here we are. We are in the exhibition room at Telonic. Telonic is a UK-based test instruments and power supplies distributor. And as you can see here, in their exhibition room, you can see many uh, power supplies, oscilloscope, uh, spectrum analyzer, EMC test kit, and, and, and many other things, right? Um, but uh, today we're here for one purpose because they recently introduced uh, a new product which is a ESD simulator and this ESD simulator as you can see here is from a Japanese manufacturer called NoiseCan and my friend Rajesh always uh, recommended this brand to me and in his opinion this is the best ESD gun available in the market so yeah uh, here we are we wanted to test this ESD gun um, and uh, see uh, how it performs. And also, I will show you two tricks I often use, right, which expands the capability of a ESD gun. And you will be uh, amazed that, you know, with a ESD gun, you can do a lot more than just zap a product. So, yeah, let's see. This is Doc, and uh, I'll leave Doc to introduce himself and the, the setup we have here uh, for today's uh, demonstration. Hi, I'm, I'm Doug from Talonic Instruments. Um, so we're here today with the Noise Ken uh, new ESD gun. You, you probably uh, recognise Talonic, being familiar with brands like Kikasui, Rigel, Siglent, to name but a few. But um, Noise Ken is, uh, has just joined us and uh, will complement all the products that we've got from Techbox. So we're really pleased. This is uh, Siglent's uh, top of the range, or this, this particular unit. Um, available in 3 gig and 4 gig. Um, it's a 12 bit oscilloscope. Um, hopefully, we're going to see some higher bandwidth models coming soon as well. For this demonstration, we do need an extremely high bandwidth oscilloscope, and uh, this one is going to be capable for the job. Okay, yeah. Yeah, as Doc said, normally if you read the um, uh, ESD test standards, they recommend at least uh, 2.5 gigahertz or 2 gigahertz bandwidth. Uh, oscilloscope simply to capture the fast rising edges as shown in this uh, uh, diagram. And uh, Min will take you through a demonstration of the ESD gun now. Obviously today we don't have a proper uh, ESD test setup as per standard but we just wanted to show you that you know the typical ESD issues that you might occur in real life right so to start with, we're going to set up this uh, voltage level to about 10,000 volts, so that's 10 kV, and we just do one, one shot, okay? And as you can see from the ESD gun, I, 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 chose, I chose the tip, and this is called air discharge tip, so it's a round-shaped tip, as you can see here. And on the back, this is interesting, actually, this is the first time I saw it, and this ESD gun, right, is that you can change the RC discharge network um, by simply doing this. And Currently, we have this IEC 61000-4-2 uh, RC network, so with resistors of 330 ohms and a capacitor of 150 picofarads. Okay, so I plug in, and this would give me uh, IEC uh, standard defined uh, discharge, right? And uh, let's just uh, use this uh, unit as a dummy, right? So you can see here, you've got some uh, display here and generally to perform a test right so this is has all the plastic housing with a display and normally you just hold hold the gun and then basically move alongside the screen to see if there's any uh, discharge path but so yeah we're gonna zap the uh, screen and see if there's a discharge path really and see what happens there oh you see the screen already <coughs> flickered yeah so this is a typical ESD event um, that uh, you may see in uh, in real life and bear in mind this is only 10 kV air discharge and in in reality it depends on the environment you could have a very dry uh, place and then you touch it this could easily achieve 10 kV or 15 kV or even higher so yeah hopefully this demonstrates this air discharge tip okay so next let's uh, let's measure the current right let's measure the current waveform all right, so now you can see, now we're changing to this sharp uh, tip, and this is called contact discharge tip, right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start with a low level, okay? So I'm gonna start with one kV as a uh, uh, contact discharge, right? 
and for people who have uh, watched my videos in the past I, I demonstrate this very effective way of measuring the ESD discharge currents by using a current probe okay and this setup actually is, is very efficient quite kind of like a, a quick way of measuring the ESD discharge current so the setup as you can see here we have a tech box RF current probe so this probe has a bandwidth of up to about 800 megahertz because this probe has a transfer impedance of 20 dB ohm when you use it with a 20 dB attenuator so as you can see here this is a 20 dB attenuator that means this setup gives you 0 dB ohm in, in, uh, effectively what does that mean? that means whatever the voltage we measured with the oscilloscope you can then translate it directly into current right so for example if we measure 5 volts in this uh, setup then that 5 volts basically becomes 5 amps that's why we now set the reading as amps reading so whatever you read here is the current going through uh, the current probe okay so let's just uh, try uh, a few uh, discharge and then see what happens there so I'm gonna discharge it first okay so that's our first pulse as you can see there it tells you the 10 to 90 percent rise time and the peak to peak right so for 1 kV uh, uh, discharge we generate about 4 amps to peak to peak current and the rise time as you can see is uh, less than 1 nanosecond but let's uh, let's zoom in and see the details right so I can see the details of the peak to peak current is you can see here yeah it's about 3.6 or 3.7 amps from here uh, the rise time is about half a nanosecond pretty pretty fast with this uh, tip so let's do 10 so I can then press one button and then discharge 10 pulses and then see the the consistency okay you can see as you discharge on the screen you can see the consistency is pretty yeah so that's 10 pulses and they are very consistent right in terms of the rise time and the waveform so yeah this is a this is a good tip this is a good gun in my opinion okay so so we demonstrate the air discharge tip we demonstrated the contact discharge tip now let me show you two tricks I often use for troubleshooting a year, this is actually not a ESD direct ESD disturbance but rather it's more it's a, it's a useful technique that you can apply on mains leads and signal leads okay this is the first uh, trick I often use right as you can see this is just a tin foil or kitchen foil from your kitchen right and I fold it like this therefore the kitchen foil has a capacitance to the cable that uh, you want to test okay so this could be your ethernet or canvas or whatever cable bundle you have okay and I had my uh, RF current monitor probe just to monitor the current waveform so that we can see it on the uh, oscilloscope and in this test I set up the voltage level to be 2 kV and um, I, I each time I press the button there will be five pulses inject into this foil okay and the tip I use is contact discharge tip okay so we're gonna place just really just here and we're gonna inject the uh, ESD voltage and because of this what we call capacitive coupling okay capacitive coupling then the current will then finally get into the device on the test okay so let's just try it first see okay so that's five pulses inject into your DUT of course you can change this uh, number to 10 pulses or 100 pulses you can also change the interval to be less than a second so basically increase your severity test level okay and then test the uh, the products in this manner and I need to explain because as you inject the, uh, the ESD through these capacitors right what what you see is in terms of the current level you see it start to reducing 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 that's because as you discharge into this foil the uh, there's a charge build up on this foil so you can't really inject too many pulses uh, without discharging this at some point but um, this actually presents a method 
of injecting high frequency, high amplitude noise current into a device. And if you can pass this test, then you have a great confidence when you test your product in, in terms of the fast transient test uh, or perhaps you know, the radiated immunity test. It, this gives you a good confidence. So that's one trick I often use with a ESD gun, okay? So the next trick, right, very similar to the, uh, to the one we just introduced. But so the one we just did, right, before this, was we use a um, capacitive coupling method by using a foil, okay? And there are two, generally two types of coupling you can use, either capacitive or inductive. So in this uh, demo, right, we're doing now, we're using inductive field coupling or magnetic field coupling or inductive coupling, okay? And the way we're doing it actually is just use the, uh, the discharge earth wire come together with the ESD gum. And normally all I, all I need to do is wrap it, uh, you know, with a few turns like in this manner, okay? Alongside the, the cable that's on the test, right? So this is again the leads, uh, in this case the power leads. Again, it could be ethernet or USB or any signal lines, right? And you just wrap it in this manner. And when you do this, when you inject a, again, pulses, then this coupling becomes what we call magnetic field coupling because this is like a current transformer in a sense, okay? So let's do this. So now all I need to do is I'm gonna inject into my return path. So therefore there's a uh, uh, current pulses again showing um, um, when you measure using a RF current probe, okay? So we're gonna, again, monitor the oscilloscope and see the difference, okay? So let's do that, okay? Three, four, five, okay? Right, okay? So you can see this method actually perhaps is a lot better compared with the capacitive coupling method. First, as you can see, five pulses we inject in terms of the level they are pretty much the same, right? As the uh, capacitive, uh, capacitive coupling we demonstrated, as you inject, the, the foil start to be charged up, whereas this method, you have less issue. Another difference, as you can see here, is the resonance is different, right? Because obviously now the coupling mechanism is different. And of course, this method, you can do five turns, in this case, as, as we do, right? Basically, when I say five turns, it's really we wrap it using like five turns, but it's not really five turns to one, right? And you can also increase this coupling by extend this length of, of the coupling path you apply. Therefore, you can inject more current into the DUT. So again, this is a really useful method to test signal lines using an ESD simulator, okay? This method was first introduced by Ken Wyatt in his... Uh, uh, troubleshooting cookbook and here we demonstrate this method effectively uh, in this setup okay so yeah so we show you two methods that we use an ESD gun to inject high frequency high energy pulses into a, into a system via the cabling and uh, as I said this is a very very useful technique it is beyond you know what ESD gun often does, but it does provide you a really, really good uh, technique of checking the uh, susceptibility of your equipment. So we hope you enjoy this uh, video and we'll see you soon.